Hello, Kevin M. Craft here at KevinMCraft.com. Welcome to another Tip Tuesday. Momo and I welcome you. I want to encourage you to uh, uh, vote for Momo. Uh, it's been nominated for a TCK Publishing Reader's Choice Award. And so uh, we're really honored by that. Uh, it is a it is a determined by by uh, by by voters. Yeah, so I um, encourage everybody to go over and vote for Momo. The most, uh, the one that gets the most votes uh, will win uh, the award in the category. I think it's the young adult and middle school uh, grade category. So um, I'll put a link in the description and it'll probably flash up on the screen here as well when I mention it again at the end of this Tip Tuesday. As for Tip Tuesday, I wanted to talk a little bit about dialogue. Have you ever read a novel and as you're reading the interaction, the dialogue between the characters, you're, you're kind of, something says to you, it's not how people talk. You know, they're using long, you know, words without contraction, sounding more like a Vulcan on Star Trek than, than a human being. Um, that's something that you would think would be, you know, an obvious thing for a novelist to know how to write dialogue. But I've noticed more often than not uh, how you know, even some of the more established you know, writers that I've read uh, can get kind of lost in their writing or become more involved with what they're trying to say with the characters than how the characters will actually speak. And so I wanted to talk about that. Um, when, you're writing, when you're writing dialogue, it's one of the things that I, I, I find that I actually do pretty well, at least from what people, what people have told me, is that you know, the dialogue sounds natural. You know, and I think, well, yeah, I mean, you know, I, 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 I try to write how people, how people speak. If you listen to people carry on a, a dialogue, you know, they don't always use correct tense when they, when they speak. Um, they often use, you know, faulty grammar. They, uh, they cut themselves off and start another thought in the middle of a, of a, of a sentence. They interrupt one another you know, a lot, you know, somebody says something and there are somebody's already, already talking and interrupting because they know what, what they want to say. You know, all these things can be, can be done in the dialogue of your characters. And I thought as an example, I would go ahead and read a passage from my, my novel, S, A Contemporary Religious Fantasy, to give you an idea of how I handle um, a novel where two people are interacting and, and the conversation is spirited. Let's do that now. At this point in S, our protagonist, Tom, has been called before the Board of Bishops for possibly disciplinary action over what he's been teaching his congregation recently. Twenty minutes later, the air was becoming humid and steadily filled with the body odor of at least two frustrated bishops, mainly Landry and Spears, the latter literally panting with exasperation. While Tom felt a throbbing building in his temples, he was probably the coolest person in the room. I don't think you understand the implications of what you're teaching, Tom, Landry said in his brassy baritone. You're telling people that Satan has absolutely nothing to do with his sinning. I'm saying he can't make a sin, Tom replied. Ramirez carefully re replied. Then what of cases of demon possession? You can't believe people under such influence can control their actions. I'm talking about the believer. The unbeliever is not protected by the Lord except at his pleasure. The believer is no longer subjected to either Satan or sin. That's why we are instructed to abstain from sin according to our new nature, that of Christ himself. But, Tom, the woman Hawthorne said kindly, people every day recognize the devil's efforts to compel us to sin. Even you cannot deny that. I don't, and thank you for proving my point. Ah, so you do acknowledge his power, McDaniels always sounded theatrical to Tom like a villain in a stage play or some kiddie movie. The old bishop lifted a shaky, crooked finger to point at him. For our adversary, the devil moves about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Yes, Tom said, donning a smug attitude, but greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. McDaniel sat forward in his seat, challenged. He actually licked his dry, thin lips. You know, the tongue is but a little member, but, Tom quickly interrupted, when one member of the body suffers, so does the whole body. 
McDaniels began to rise painfully to his feet, trembling as though from a palsy. Young man, pride goes before a fall, but a just man shall fall seven times and stand again. All right, that's enough, Landry interrupted. Bishop McDaniels' hunched form quivered for a moment, his faded blue eyes branding Tom for eternity before he slowly retook his seat, muttering the groaning of his bones almost audible. I'm gonna cut that, and we're gonna I'm gonna interrupt it there, okay? And I'm gonna get that. So, did you see? Did you hear how the dialogue flows, um, but is kind of I want to say choppy, but the natural flow of, a, of any any dialogue is gonna involve interruptions and cuts. It's gonna be choppy in some ways because you know dialogue isn't poetic. The dialogue isn't smooth. Each character isn't in tune with one another. They're, they're talking at one another. And so it's, it's important to be able to, to, to include that in your dialogue, not to get too lost in what you're, you want your character to say or to communicate, but concentrate more on how they're saying it. And I guarantee your readers will, will relate with your characters. And they'll appreciate that because they know that's how people sound. That's how people talk, you know. And uh, they'll be able to. It'll it'll be make their reading experience uh, of your work that much more enjoyable. All right. So just a quick tip, and I hope that I was able to demonstrate that for you with, with my writing. All right. Thank you for joining me again for another Tip Tuesday. I want to remind you again: vote for Momo uh, for the TCK Publishing Reader's Choice Award. Um, appreciate your vote, your vote counts, and uh, I appreciate you taking the time to do that, all right? We'll see you next time for Tip Tuesday.